the, the Robbie that you asked me about, I don't know him anymore. Um, that guy, uh, I'm kind of glad parts of him are gone and I'm um, kind of miss, miss parts. Robbie, who's going to give you some soft, sappy words before we start. Robbie, you might recognize from the TV show Ink Master. That day started like any other day, you know, like, I got, I got up, I, you know, we had just gotten in the RV, and I uh, get out of the RV, go to the convention, and everything's cool, you know, me, me and Donna are setting up. So normal Friday night, some people with hooks in them come over and say, Robbie, we're ready for you. So I go over to the suspension area. Um, I get my piercings done. Uh, <clears throat> I then do my motivational speech, which I developed that like four years ago before my suspensions. I was tired of thinking that I couldn't do enough, that I wasn't good enough, uh, that I should just fucking kill myself because nobody cares. Um, I've battled with that for years. I still battle with it. I ran into my suspension as I always do. I started swinging a little weird, so I see the one pole behind me, so I grab onto it and I start climbing. I, I realized I was I was way further down the pole than I usually am when I when I climb the pole. So I said, "Fuck it, I'll just shock load early." So shock loading is something you do as performers do in suspension, where you grab onto something above you, you take the pressure off of the the line, and then you shock down. I fucking go to swing down, and somewhere in midair, I heard my leg snap. And I look down and I see my goddamn leg and foot like fucking over here. And so like I immediately like yoke up like this and I'm holding it. And Steve's sitting there looking at me like And I'm looking at this thing like What the fuck am I gonna do? I had no fucking idea. And I'd look at Steve and he'd look at me and... I just sat there quiet. No emotions were really coming out of me until I started thinking about how am I going to afford this. So then I'd lay back and I'd cry and I'd be like, how can I afford this? And my friends were like, don't worry, you'll be fine. And my friend Sean is holding me and my friend Candace is loving me and like they're just giving me all the love they can because I have no fucking idea. What life is going to be like after this point? The paramedics get there, which felt like an hour. I go, they go to roll me out and it's like a goddamn movie. Everybody fucking stops tattooing and they're fucking cheering and they're yelling and I'm sitting there and I'm like, yeah, like I'm fucking, I'm like, thanks guys. We got to the hospital. I was losing pulse in my foot, so what they wanted to do was reattach it so we could get some blood flow properly. And so now I haven't gotten into surgery yet. This is all ER shit. This is just all getting me to where I can go to surgery. So we get, to, uh, we get upstairs. This is all night long it takes to get upstairs. I come out of surgery at some point, and I've got this cage around my leg. Keep in mind, I don't know what I'm going in to do, you know, like, I thought they was just gonna reattach his bitch, we was gonna have a little bit of this and that, and you know, a couple months go by, Robbie's in a cast and he's walking around again, you know, like, I think I'm gonna be normal again. The cage had a fucking piece of metal like that big drilled through my ankle, two of those drilled through my shin bone, and then just like this whole metal case all around it. They call that an external fixator. Um, they, don't, they didn't go inside my body to fix me, they went outside to just reattach and let everything stay still. How many days in the hospital? 40. What did you do in the hospital for 40 days? I had Donna there and I was really happy for that. <laughs> um, we got a puppy on Father's Day because I was supposed to be with my son. So the first 40 days was just us in the hospital. You know, I'm, you'd be surprised how many friends you have when you're me. I didn't know that, uh, how many friends I had or how many people cared about me. Um, you know, after the convention, 
so many of my friends came by and then people just kept popping in and I'd make new friends based off old friends somewhere else, like somebody from Florida sent one of their friends to bring us food one day, you know, just because she thought I would be tired of eating hospital food. As, as a lot of people know, I'm the motivation guy, you know? I'm the guy that tells you to meditate through it. I'm the guy that tells you to find a plan and stick with it. I'm the guy that tells you to fucking persevere. I'm the guy that tells you it's okay to fall apart. You know, I'm the guy that tells you all the things you need to live your life, and now I gotta fucking live them. And I'm like, fuck. So I think my biggest activity was living my words. Like, I literally had to figure out how to do this, how to not yell at Donna when I'm stressed out, how to not worry about money when we just had a huge donation, well, a huge multitude of donations of like almost 20 grand, you know, like, so I'm sitting there and I'm worried about money because I'm like, I can't work. What's life going to be like? And I'm like, just trying to be like, dude, stop worrying about money. You know, I asked one of the doctors, I'm like, so like, how long till I get my leg back? Like, when am I going to have a normal leg? This motherfucker open mouth belly laughed at me. He's like, <laughs> you'll have a leg, man. I didn't say you're gonna have a good one. You're gonna have a leg. So in a month's time, what was the plan for your leg? We had no idea. What did they say to you? Um, you might have to amputate at some point in time, but we're not there yet. We're gonna put this on, we're gonna wait three weeks and we're gonna do another uh, surgery. So they did that. So now I've got, you know, my leg and all that. And then stitches over here, cause that was a gnarly diagonal cut. So I got stitches down here where my leg fell off. I got stitches um, all up and down my shin to the top of my foot. And then I got stitches around the ball of my ankle, um, all from areas. They put 16 screws and two plates in there. And um, I wasn't allowed to walk on it for a while. So I'm, I'm with the doctors. I'm like, look, I need to get to my son's graduation. He's going to gradu graduate high school once. Like, I need to be there. So um, they set it up. We went. Now, we're changing fucking bandages every night, you know, all that stuff. Well, Donna's not saying anything about the weird smells until after Jaden's graduation's over. So she calls the hospital and they're like, get here now. So, um, we left. December 15th, 2019, um, we go in for one of our routine checkups. I go in, I get my fucking x-ray, no big. You know, I'm walking and he's like, it looks good, everything looks good. And I'm like, but I hate how I walk. You know, like, am I ever gonna be able to run? He's like, no. He said, and furthermore, we're gonna have to fuse you. So like, what you have now isn't even what you're gonna have. When we fuse you, you're gonna end up with less flexion in your ankle. That's about when he said, well, you're a perfect candidate for amputation. And immediately I was like, started crying. I didn't know what to do with myself. Like, what do you do with that? So it was your decision? Who the f gets to make that decision? Like, why the f did I get to make that decision? Like, I don't know, would I be happier if I woke up with no leg from the accident or? Am I happier fucking fighting? Because now I'm tired of fighting. I got so tired of fighting, dude. Like, I was at my mom's house a couple days before the amputation, and she's like, why do you want to do this? She couldn't understand why I wanted to. She's like, why do you want to do this? And I got up and I walked. <laughs> and it was so hard to walk. I'm going to get another leg. I'm gonna have the coolest prosthetic leg collection that anybody's ever had, you know? Like, but I had to choose. I got to choose, I had to choose. Depends on who you are. I don't know if I like the decision, but I feel like it's what I had to do. And now I'm gonna be like, a big ass dude with one leg doing backflips on a wakeboard behind a boat. So, you know, like, I'm just gonna keep crushing barriers and stuff, but what the f do you do with that?
watching the video of my fall was something I needed to do to, to accomplish accomplish that goal of overcoming. You can't fucking get me, you know, like it happened, but I'm not gonna let this hold me. Like I've gotta get a hold on you, video. Like, you know, like I gotta get a hold on this injury. I can't let this injury control me. I've gotta fucking, I've gotta rise above. I've gotta be fucking strong. And if I fucking fold every time I watch that video, then how strong am I really? People tell me I'm strong. People tell me I'm brave. Um, I'm starting to, I have to feel that at this point, man. You know, like if, if I don't feel brave at this point or if I don't feel strong at this point, I'm denying myself the truth. And that in and of itself is worse than being cocky to me. You know, so I'd rather be confident and run that risk of being cocky and being strong than be in this dark place thinking I can't do it. This fucking community has given me more fucking support and I could ever imagine. And like our tight community, the tattoo community, has really, 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 I feel like I'm crowd surfing on them throughout this whole thing. Like how is this big ass dude being held up by people's hands? And that's what they've been doing for me this whole time. Nobody fucking wakes up and thinks they're gonna die today. Nobody wakes up and thinks they're gonna lose their leg today. Like. I didn't fucking wake up in that RV in that weird parking lot, ready to go to work, thinking, man, I might lose my leg. I was like, man, I hope I fucking hit my fucking mental quota that I set for myself for the weekend. You know, I hope Friday's not slow. You know, like, I hope I can feel comfortable in that room. That's what I was thinking of. Now, when I go into a convention, it's like, <laughs> hi guys. I don't care about any of that other stuff. I'm just happy to be here. Thanks for the hugs. How you been? Been good? Well, dude, um, since since I saw you last, I have a leg now. I know. Um, so that's real cool, you know. Look at that. That guy. Uh, I've been, dude, I've been working out. Fucking, this is my 11th week, I think, straight. Uh -huh. um, so I'm just, I'm just trying to stick with the program, man. You know, take care of myself, be good to myself. 67. You know, fucking. Awesome be a human again, like it's really nice to have a leg, you know, and... <laughs> what's, the, what's the best jokes you've heard? <laughs> I like, uh, don't, don't have a leg to stand on is like one of my favorites. It's, it's an easy fucking zinger.